Starting us off at number 10, and an animal I only wish I would have been alive to see is a human-sized penguin. Back in 2019, the remains of what can only be described as a giant penguin were discovered in New Zealand by paleontologists. The fossilized bones of the animal indicate that this giant penguin reached a height of approximately 5 foot 3 inches and weighed in around 176 pounds. That's about 80 kilograms. That's a big mother freaking penguin! These large creatures lived in the Paleocene Epoch around 56 to 66 million years ago. They were specific to the waters of the southern hemisphere and it is said that they grew to be this large after the disappearance of large marine reptiles along with the dinosaurs indicating that these penguins were able to survive and thrive, becoming much larger over time. The largest penguin on Earth today is the Emperor Penguin, measuring around 3.9 feet. If those penguins are called Emperor, then I think I'm going to call these guys Mega Emperor Penguins. Number 9, Terror Birds. Pretty much sums it up, but I'll fill in the facts for you. The forest rachos were one of the largest birds to ever exist on the earth, and they certainly lived up to their street name. Once T-Rexes were extinct, these massive and deadly creatures stole the crown. Their jaws were so strong, they could sever the spine of a large horse in one bite. They roam South America, and though scientists have a spare few ideas as to how they actually behave, they are comparable to a velociraptor, except taller. Their height ranged from 3 to 10 feet tall, but also like the Velociraptor, they could not fly, which was fine with any prey that were able to get out of their reach. Their supremacy as emperor predators lasted for about 60 million years until they mysteriously faded out 2.5 million years ago. No one quite knows why as of yet. Could it have been the environment that became their biggest nemesis? I guess we'll never know. And number 8 we have the Pelagornis sanzi. 30 million years ago, our cute little trips to the beach wouldn't have been so cute. We would not only have to put up with seagulls, we would have to put up with the much larger ancestor, the Pelagornis sanzi. Back in 1983, in South Carolina, the first fossil of this massive extinct bird was discovered when construction crews began the expansion of the Charleston International Airport. This bird had a wingspan of up to 24 feet. That's almost 7.5 meters. If the sheer size of this animal wasn't enough to scare you, you'll be happy to know that it had a mouth filled with suedo teeth making it easy to devour its prey. Based on bone structures, scientists are fairly certain that this bird did fly, although they are not sure. Once a bird reaches a certain size and weight, it becomes much more difficult for it to fly without needing extra energy and power. But scientists believe these birds could have also used their wings to glide as well as catch the ocean winds to keep themselves airborne. Seagulls are annoying enough. Imagine a giant one that could also eat you. I would be intimidated, but if they also did that dumb, stupid, like, seagull laugh, uh -huh. I don't think I'd be able to hold it together. Number seven, the great auk. Once thriving in colonies off North Atlantic coasts, the great auk would grow 30 inches long, which isn't too scary, but hear me out. It had tiny wings that would only be used to swim. They were only 13 centimeters long. Kind of cute, but again, hear me out. They were small and jarring to look at. I mean, if this thing was coming at me today, I'd certainly have a rough time. But thankfully for hungry sailors, the great auk was greatly defenseless. Yeah, oops, sorry, we got a little, little snacky. Around the 1500s, European fishermen discovered this perfect area for hunting, and it just happened to be where most, if not all, these great auks were living and thriving. Yeah, Newfoundland looked like the iceberg and club penguin. It was just like, mm, stacked, just looking real good. Now the iceberg and club penguin is gone, as are these guys, so, you know, not a bad bit. Also, I'm broken inside, I miss Club Penguin, RIP. By 1950, the last two known specimens were hunted by a single fisherman, hunted on LD Island, just off the coast of Iceland. Scientists plan on using genetic information extracted from their fossils or preserved organs, remember those jars of organs, those guys with the random jars of exotic bird pieces? They come in handy, apparently. They plan on editing their DNA into the closest living species, which is now the razor-built ox. So yeah, the organization Revive and Restore is behind the wheel on this one. Number six. Horseshoe crab. Horseshoe crabs are marine water arthropods of the family Lemulidae. Despite their name, they are not actually anything like crabs or crustaceans. Then what are they, dude? They are technically chalicerates, most closely related to arachnids like spiders and scorpions. Awesome. Like, what are we looking at here? What, what is this thing? Fossil records for horseshoe crabs extend back as far as 480 million years ago. Nice, thank God. Wait a second, nope, they're still around. <laughs> These shelly dudes like to keep it shallow, however, in murky waters, mostly in Southeast Asia. Horseshoe crabs use hemocyanin to carry oxygen through their blood, which actually turns their blood blue. 
due to the copper in said proteins. This feature is similar to what white blood cells do for us, and because of this, these guys are unfortunately blood harvested every year by us for medicine. Non-lethal, which involves collecting and bleeding the creature and then releasing them back into the sea. Yeah, I'd be way too scared to grab this thing. Are you kidding me? Like, I respect the animal kingdom, but like at a distance. Number five, Linenicus. It's not a Decepticon, it's a Linenicus. Close though. If you thought a T-Rex had tiny arms, wait till you see this old dude. Linenicus monodactylus, these guys roamed the lands of Mongolia 65 million years ago. I'm a fan of this dinosaur. Honestly, it's scary, and I get that, but I would honestly own this one as a pet. It was actually just giving other dinosaurs the middle finger its entire life, basically, if you look at them. It had a little arm and one finger with one claw. That's what kind of situation. It was like Wolverine. It was like the, the, the chick from Wolverine, the one scratchy thing instead of the three. She had the one. Or Deadpool from the X-Men that no one liked. Also, one blade. That one didn't work. In terms of these other monsters on this list, it's quite small. So, you know, maybe just one little kick to the neck. Maybe you'll survive. Coming in at the size of a parrot, this little guy laid eggs and carved through everything and anything that snuck into their nest. Yeah, it was a carnivore. So, T-Rex, Velociraptor, this little guy, all coming after you. If you don't hit that thumbs up, he's gonna get his middle finger and poke you. Number four, the Glyptodon. Basically an ancient armadillo. Yeah, now we're talking. With its rounded bony shell house and squat limbs, it resembles a giant dinosaur turtle, aging it between 5.3 million to 12,000 years ago. This thing was old, old. Glyptodon meaning grooved tooth because of its square teeth. This thing was big, 10 feet long, weighing as much as like 4,000 pounds. Like picture a Volkswagen Beetle. This giant armadillo existed in present day North and South America. Though the Glyptodon had a powerful tail and an armored back made of a thousand bony plates, it likely lived a fairly peaceful existence. Vegetarian, nice smile, this thing was killing it. It mostly ate grass and never really had to even worry about getting into fights. That being said, the Glyptodon could easily defend itself I mean, Captain America's shield for a back and a sledgehammer for a tail. It could literally Hulk smash said car. Early hunters likely stalked the Glyptodon for meat and its shell. To kill it, they had to turn it on its back, basically tipping over a car. Yeah, gotta give it up to the early humans. They were badass and strong. Number three is a name I could actually say. Colossal Squid. It should be no surprise to you given its name that this creature has made it onto this list. I mean, its name alone depicts a massive creature. You don't get called Colossal for nothing. Thankfully, this creature doesn't roam any beaches, but instead prefers the dark, cold recesses of the Antarctic waters. Weighing in at over one thousand pounds, the Colossal Squid can grow to an immense size of 46 feet. Right? With eight tentacles and two arms, each equipped with sharp hooks designed to latch onto their prey. And they also kind of rotate on their suckers. Weird, right? So even if you try to get it out of it, it's like, uh, that's exactly what fish do down there, I guess. They can consume fish as large as seven feet and have even been known to attack sperm whales. Whoa, as some have been found with scarring matching the colossal squid. Okay, so I know that there have been dinosaurs bigger than this one, but it's still pretty massive and it's very real and they do exist and um, they're coming to get you. Coming in at our number two spot is quite possibly one of the scariest animals to have ever lived on planet Earth, the Megalodon shark. We're gonna need a bigger boat. These sharks lived during the early Miocene epoch to the end of the Pliocene epoch about 23 to 2.5 million years ago. The Megalodon, made up of compound Greek root words, translates to giant tooth when boy oh boy did these things have giant teeth. The Megalodon female could reach sizes up to 58.7 feet, or approximately 18 meters, and the males could reach sizes of up to 47 feet, which is approximately 14 and a half meters. Female sharks could reach weights up to 143,000 pounds, which is about 65,000 kilograms. These are the largest fish we have ever known. In case it wasn't obvious and you were wondering, yeah, these massive beasts had quite the nasty bite. Its bite diameter was about three meters. Needless to say, they were at the top of their food chain, which is probably why they lived for almost 20 million years. Sadly, the closest thing you can get to seeing a megalodon shark these days are the bones in museums or to watch the Meg, starring Jason Statham. Warning, the CGI is bad. Number one, the blue whale. And finally, in our last corner, ringing in at 200 tons, measuring 82 to 105 feet in size, we have the one, the only, the blue whale. 
Blue whales are the biggest animals ever known to exist on Earth, bigger than any dinosaurs we have currently uncovered. Its heart alone weighs 400 pounds, and its arteries could be big enough for a small child to swim through, and it only beats around twice a minute versus our 60 to 100 beats per minute, which is insane. Despite being carnivores, and unless you get caught in the way like that man in Massachusetts this year, they are also gentle giants. They mainly feed on krill, which seems like a pretty small fish to satisfy such a massive creature, though it may be one of the reasons they get so big. But you may hear them before you see them, as their kips and calls can be heard from a thousand miles away. Comparatively, a jet engine registers at 140 decibels, while a blue whale is closer to 188. Imagine being next to that when it just calls out to its friend. Nothing like Dory in Finding Nemo. Blue whales are currently on the endangered species list due to extensive whaling in the 1900s, collisions with ships, and garbage debris in the ocean. So hopefully, we fix that problem before we lose the most amazing creature on this planet. Starting us off at number 10, we have the fish made famous by Disney Pixar's Finding Nemo, the angler fish. In case you're wondering which exact fish from Finding Nemo I'm talking about, it's the one that scares the hell out of Dory and Marlin and has the giant like light attached to its head. Yeah, it scared Dory and it scared Marlin and you know what, it scared all of us too once we learned that it was actually real. The angler fish is a deep water fish that is also bioluminescent, meaning it can create its own light and glow in the dark. The females are the ones that have a glowing bulb of flesh attached to their head and they use this to lure in all kinds of prey. Most angler fish are about a foot in size but some can reach up to sizes of 3.3 feet. These terrifying fish have an enormous mouth filled with crazy sharp teeth that are all angled inward. Ouch. As if you weren't scared enough of these fish already, anglerfish can eat prey twice their size. I mean, humans are pretty much twice their size, so does that mean... Never mind, let's not go there. Rachel, over to you. Number nine, the green anaconda. Okay, look, if I'm being honest here, I could also put Burmese python on here too, because bottom line, they can and have swallowed a human being whole. Anything that is capable of doing that is nightmare fuel and I don't, I don't need that. I don't need that kind of energy. The green anaconda is the largest snake in the world capable of reaching lengths over 30 feet long and 12 inches around. They are so astounding that they have even been depicted as magical beings in South American mythology. Some local legends have even said that they can reach over 60 feet. <laughs> but there has yet to be a confirmed sighting. But if there is one somehow hiding out there, it's basically the closest thing to a basilisk, and I ain't going to slither in close to one of those anytime soon. At number eight, we have the Goliath tigerfish. This thing looks straight out of a horror movie, my god. This five foot large carnivorous fish lives in the Congo River in Africa. In the second episode of the hit TV series called River Monsters, host Jeremy Wade catches a giant demon fish, otherwise known as the Goliath tigerfish. Goliath because it's freaking huge, and tigerfish, well, because <laughs> look at those teeth. Some of these massive fish can even reach sizes of up to 6 feet and can weigh up to 150 pounds or more. I know I said these fish are carnivorous, but they're actually piscivores, meaning that they only eat fish, such as the small Nile perch. Kind of like people who are only pescatarians and only eat fish. That being said, these things will eat whatever is available to them. There was once an attack where a little girl down in the Congo went waist deep in the water and wore a little waist belt made out of bottle caps to fend off evil spirits. But unfortunately, this belt couldn't fend off evil fish. The shine attracted a large Goliath tigerfish and it made an attack on the girl. As far as I know, the young girl survived and she is okay, but this was the story that made Jeremy Wade want to visit the Congo. Yeah, <laughs> um, Jerem, I think you're alone on this one. Number seven, hell pigs. I know, it sounds like a biker gang. But once I tell you more about this creature, you'll understand the name. The Deodon is an extinct genus of massive killer pig that existed 29 to 19 million years ago, occupying North America after the dinosaurs bit the dust. They weren't picky eaters, which meant they would eat anything and everything in their path, regardless of size. Imagine a pig standing six feet tall and 12 feet long, weighing 2,000 pounds with razor blades for teeth. Its head alone measured three feet and could take on even the most ferocious predators. Scientists aren't quite sure as to why they went extinct, but we are certainly glad they did. Otherwise, we might have been their prey, not the other way around. At our number six spot, we have the Goliath beetle. Now, this doesn't really make dinosaurs look small, but this is the closest thing that is still alive that resembles the size of insects back in the prehistoric times. Also, we couldn't let Dewey get away with just one video that didn't involve massive skin crawling bugs, right? 
The Goliath beetle is the heaviest insect currently on Earth, weighing in at around 100 grams or 3.5 ounces. They can grow to lengths of 11.5 centimeters, that's 4.5 inches. These beetles are native to tropical regions of Africa and feed on plant sap and fruit. These things move extremely slow and are fairly easy to catch if interested. I'm not. But please, just let them be and keep them far away from me. I watched a video on YouTube while researching and some guy let this thing crawl all the way up his arm. <laughs> are you crazy? Number five, the super croc. Imagine a creature that can make the crocodiles you've seen look like geckos. The Perosaurus was one of the largest crocodile relatives to ever exist. How big could it get? Well, about double the size of crocodiles today, so around 35 to 40 feet and weighed three tons on average. Yeah. The colossal creature terrorized the waters of South America around eight million years ago. An interesting fact about this guy though is that unlike a lot of its relatives, it was actually an omnivore, meaning that it didn't just feed on fish, but also vegetation. So the real moral of the story is that if you want to grow big and strong kids, Remember to eat your vegetables. Number three, the Goliath spider. Look, it's not bigger than me, but the only good thing about this spider is that you don't have to worry about walking into like a massive web. Thankfully, they don't make them because they don't need to. Also referred to as the bird eating spider, these arachnids are ferocious when it comes to hunting. But funny enough, despite their name, they mainly gorge themselves on frogs and rodents. But how they do it? Ugh. They devour their prey by injecting them with a paralyzing venom, and since they have no teeth besides like their two one inch long fangs, they regurgitate gastric acids to help consume them from the inside out. So all that's left of the animal is like the skin and bones. Thankfully, their poison isn't deadly to us, but their razor sharp fangs can still do some damage. They can actually puncture our skin. Oh, <laughs> and I forgot, they can grow up to a foot wide. Try smashing that with your boot. At number two, we have the giant marine isopod. These things are freaking scary as hell, but at the same time, remind me of that Pokemon Kabuto. Anyone else see it? Anyway, these massive wood lice like creatures can be found at the bottom of the sea floor. They can survive at depths of 500 meters and can reach sizes of up to 30 centimeters from head to tail. They were first discovered in 1879 by French zoologist Alphonse Milne Edwards in the Gulf of Mexico. They eat pretty much whatever falls to the bottom of the seafloor, and since many things don't survive at those depths, it doesn't really have any predators. Apparently they are not as harmful as they look, but not much is known about these creatures just yet. Although their metabolism is very slow. Apparently a giant isopod was kept in captivity in Japan and survived five years without eating. A couple of reasons for its size is that a deep sea creatures need to carry more oxygen as well as don't have many other predators, which leads to them flourishing and growing in size. In the end, even though these guys are quite harmless, I think that's all I need to know about them for now, because I'm happy to have them stay on the sea floor where they are far, far, far away Away from me. Number one, remember that uh, scary bird I mentioned before? Yeah, the cassowary. For those of you who aren't Canadian, you may not understand the fear Canadians have of Canadian geese. They are territorial, vicious, and they poop everywhere. But I would take hissing cobra chickens over cassowaries any day. They can grow to heights over 6.6 .6 feet and weigh just over 190 pounds. But it's claws we are really afraid of. Their claws can and have gutted human beings with one slice and their pets. When you walk, they follow. If you run, they run after you. Though they are usually pretty shy, but if you get on their bad side or meet one that just knows it can take you, good day, mate. They also look equal parts beautiful and insane. Like the Harley Quinn of the emu family, but not nearly as charming. They also make this sound. That's a nope. That's a nope. They're recognized by their ostrich-like shape. I said emu earlier, I actually meant ostrich. They live in Australia, so if you needed to know about one more thing on that continent that could kill you, man, now you know. Number 10, Longisquama. Longisquama is a very crucial genus of extinct reptile. I feel like I already sound like David Attenborough, dude. The longest squama in Cygnus from the middle to late Triassic formation. That was not bad, that was not bad, come on. Longest squama means long scales, in Cygnus means small. The longest squama in Cygnus is notable for a number of long structures that appear to grow from its skin. Little mohawk boys, you know? These things were rad looking. They were diepsids, which was a reptile subclass. A small group of climbing and gliding reptiles. Little jumper dudes. These guys were awesome. Little mohawk tree dudes. 
They lived in forests located on the supercontinent once called Pangaea. Its most notable feature is a double row of long scale like pins running along its back forming 6 to 8 pairs. It had one pair of scales for each of its pair of ribs like knight's armor, little mini tectonic plates mixed with feathers on top and we get Longisquamous scales. Could be rows of wolverine claws, could be rows of feathers or dragonflyish wings. Scientists still don't know. This little mohawk boy is sick though. Little flying dude. Those are definitely little dragonfly wings, I'm calling it. Number nine, Carnotaurus. Okay, Kyle and I, we had a different dinosaur animated movie growing up as kids, okay? Today you've got the little dinosaur that's cute, that's great animation. Back when we were younger, we had the scary dinosaur movie. Remember that one? where none of them talked with the Carnotaurus guy as the villain. Yeah, that one didn't talk. It was just the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm pretty sure I walked out of that theater. Didn't say a peep. And this guy didn't have to, really. Look at him. The Carnotaurus was a unit. Yeah, they thankfully disappeared 69 million years ago. Nice. They were around the same size as a T-Rex, coming in at about 29 feet long, but they were nicknamed meat-eating bulls. So, yeah, that ought to tip you why they were the villains in said movie. They would run at about 25 miles an hour. They're one of the fastest and largest moving theropods to ever live. Its arms were smaller than that of a T-Rex, so we can roast them in some capacity, okay? We got them on some, you know, on something. But honestly, it didn't matter because this one had horns, hence the meat-eating bull alias. It was rediscovered in 1984 by Jose Bonaparte in Argentina. They've only discovered one skeleton of these things, so hopefully there weren't too many of these poking around. Yeah, Ana Linda took me to see this one. I'm pretty sure I walked out. It fucked me up good. The scary guy, he runs out so fast. God, he's so fast. Number eight, Plesiosaurus. Ah yes, the Plesiosaurus. A genus of extinct, very large marine reptile that lived during the early Jurassic period. It is known by nearly complete skeletons from the waters and rocks in England. It is known for its small head, long and slender neck, broad turtle-like body, short tail, and two pairs of large paddles for limbs, and is apparently the legendary, the one and only Loch Ness Monster. Cue the bagpipes. The first complete skeleton of a plesiosaurus was discovered by paleontologist and fossil hunter Mary Anning in Jurassic Age rocks December 1823. Plesiosaurus are moderate size compared to what it was swimming around them at the time, usually only about 5 meters in length, and about 500 pounds. They had the head like a big pit bull, and the teeth like a big pit bull. They fed mainly on clams and snails. Okay, this is like a medium scary now, all of a sudden. Number seven, the Asian giant hornet. After hearing about this giant flying disappointment, you won't think the wasps we have are that bad at all. After all, they are called giant hornets for a reason, as they are the world's largest known hornet species ever. They can grow up to 1.5 to 2 inches, but their wingspan can span up to 3 inches. Thankfully, they are native to China, Japan, and several other Asian countries and have not been confirmed as established in North America, though they have been spotted. We especially dislike them on this channel due to the fact that they like to attack bee nests and destroy colonies. They are incredibly territorial and have been known to kill as many as 50. 50 people a year in Japan, hence earning the name Murder Hornets. Need I say more? At number six, we have the Emperor Scorpion, or its Latin name, Pandunus Imperator. I don't know if I said that right. Sounds cool, but I'ma just call it a big freaking scorpion. These scorpions are predominantly found in the African rainforests. They may not be as big as our other animals on our list, but let me tell you, they are still big enough to scare the hell out of me. These scorpions can reach almost up to 8 inches in length. And just in case large black claws aren't enough to scare you away, these freaky things can even glow blue or green underneath ultraviolet rays. They also have a stinger that can produce venom, but it is not considered dangerous towards humans. Yeah, right. Look at this thing. You're telling me it has those scary upgrades and it's not dangerous towards humans? Yeah, okay, yeah, right. Next thing you're gonna tell me that dragons are real. Hmm? Number five, the Komodo dragon. Dragons sound incredibly cool, but in reality, they would be absolutely terrifying. Terrifying yet beautiful, these slow stalking creatures only need to get one bite in. Their serrated teeth latches onto prey and then tears away, leaving a gaping bloody wound that will never clot, because that's the job of their venom. As the venom seeps in, their prey will descend into shock and potentially bleed out as they escape. Not potentially, they will bleed out as they escape. But this 10 foot long beast will slowly stalk behind and await the moment the poison takes hold. At number four, we have the tarantula hawk. 
Okay, but get this. This creature is not a tarantula, nor is it a hawk. So how could it get this crazy name and what the hell is it? The tarantula hawk is actually a big wasp that eats nectar, flowers, and oh, and one more thing, tarantulas. Meaning it gets the hawk part of its name from coming down and feasting on its prey just like a hawk. These wasps are found in every continent except Europe and Africa and grow up to two inches in length. And yet they still can prey on tarantulas, which are a lot bigger than that. Once they have one of those creepy big furry spiders, they feed them to its larvae. Ugh. They have blue bodies and these large orange wings, and a good number of these wasps can be found in and around the Grand Canyon. So these wasps won't sting unless threatened, but when they do, it is apparently one of the most painful stings of any insect in the world. So in case you're wondering, no, Dewey has no plans on ever visiting the Grand Canyon now. Number three, Spinosaurus. Another Jurassic Park star, and rightfully so. The largest carnivorous dinosaur of all time, even bigger than a T-Rex. Can you imagine that? I feel sick to my stomach already. 93 million years ago, they stopped terrorizing the lands of what is now Egypt and Morocco. Now, if you didn't already guess, its name translates to spine lizard. And that spine was quite long. Coming from me, like, that says a lot. The Spinosaurus would measure up to 60 feet long, and aside for its back, one of the most notable features is its six foot long head. Yeah, not neck, six foot long head. That's an Egyptian god. That's like, this is terrifying. Its mouth was similar to a crocodile's with straight, sharp teeth. He would just do the alligator smack and then just chomp the shit out of you and yours. Paleontologists from the University of Pennsylvania believe that this guy used to swim as well. Because where the first Spinosaurus fossil was found, that used to be the Beharia Oasis in Egypt, a massive swamp. Water or land, I want nothing to do with it. Long mouth, stretch neck McGee, stinky ancient alligator breath, get out of here. Never. Turtles, not even. Number two, Megalania. Megalania. The Varanus priscus. This extinct species of giant monitor lizard is a part of the megafauna that inhabited Australia during the Pleistocene. It is the largest terrestrial lizard known to have existed, reaching an estimated length of seven meters. Yeah, length of a killer whale. Weighing around 5,000 pounds. Megalania is thought to have had very early and similar ecology to the modern Komodo dragon. The fossils of lizards in Australia date back around 50,000 years ago. The First Nations peoples of Australia encountered these ancient dragons, and we actually hunted these things way, way back. These things can sprint three meters a second, Taylor. God, he's so fast. Whenever I'm tired at the gym, I'm just gonna picture this giant lizard just like trucking behind me. From its size alone, scientists suggest it would have fed mostly upon large sized marsupials and mammals such as the Australian lion. Oh, that's good. Yeah, this thing ate lions, dude. With its heavily built limbs and body, a large skull, a jaw full of serrated blade-like teeth. Some scientists regard Megalania as the apex predator for the last thousands of years. Um, yeah, I'd like to think so. It's Australia too, dude. That makes it like 18 times worse. Oh yeah, and it was venomous. Of course, of course. And finally, number one, Titanoboa. The worst for last. Here we go, my sweet bees. The Titanoboa was over 40 feet long. That's two thirds of a bowling lane. In case you want to imagine it in your head. There you go. Every time you let that ball go, just think. Snake, 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 still snake. That's how long it was. It's quite horrifying. And if we were born 58 million years ago, we'd have to avoid being eaten by this thing. Again, we grew up watching Anaconda, okay? We know how scary these things can be, especially when Angelina Jolie's dad's running the ship. He doesn't know the maps well. He's gonna take it into a swampy area. Snake's gonna come out, ruin the day. Paleontologists found this beast recently. Its fossil was excavated back in 2004, believe it or not, in Colombia near Lake Maracaibo. But it wasn't until 2009 where it was publicly described. Yeah, it took them five years to be like, should we tell them? I don't know, why should we? I mean, do we have to? So far, we only have the remains of 30 adult Titanoboas. That's 29 too many, if you ask me. I say we, like ourselves, have one. No, we don't have it. I I imagine that, I'd be sick. Even people who have snakes as pets, I'm never gonna visit. Sorry, you're alone for the holidays this time. Just you and your snake with a human name for some reason. Enjoy it. He doesn't bite. I'm like, cool, I still don't like him. 